Hey guys, this is part two of a video series talking about how I set up an action camera to capture every moment on the water. After this intro, let's get into it. Gotta get your arms way up in a cat and set the hook on a small mouth bass and then you'll understand. Gotta get your hands on a Shimano reel and a G-loom is right up at you like what you feel. Step on the deck. Give the world hello and welcome to my world. So in the first video, you saw me setting up the Power Stick 53 inch. This is actually my old one. This is a uh, Gen 2, I believe. Um, but it's been through it, man. I've loved this thing since I bought it. It's been a game changer for me. But I'm going to switch the camera around right now. I'm going to show you guys the settings that I choose to use on my GoPro Hero 8. Um, that has helped me over the years um, capture some really good footage. There are some downfalls with the GoPro Hero 8 as far as the looping feature goes. GoPro, if you're out there, listen to this. Please put 2.7K resolution on looping. Please do that. However, if you're just not getting into the ball game of recording your, your adventures on the water, you want to stick with around 1080p. That way you can actually make sure the computer that you're going to be editing this stuff on, whether it be your cell phone or whatever, is going to be um, good enough to make that happen. So let's dive into it. I'm going to switch the camera around so you guys can see the GoPro. We're going to talk about how to upgrade the firmware via um, wirelessly or via Wi-Fi. I'm going to show you guys how to connect your, your GoPro to your phone for your GoPro app. And then we're going to talk about the settings that you need to use or the settings that I use that are a good starting point if you're just now getting out on the water filming your adventures. All right, guys, so here's my GoPro Hero 8. I wanted to show you guys how to take the door off here, and I apologize, I'm reaching around the camera here, but you're going to pull out on the on the door, and that'll get the, the door off there. Put a battery in my camera here. Power button's on the side on the GoPro Hero 8. Press, turns on. Now you're seeing, obviously, the GoPro... All right, so let's tackle this problem right here first and foremost. Guys, this is the biggest issue that I have with GoPro cameras um, with this one. So you can see right here, update date and time. Automatically update connecting the GoPro app or set them manually. I'm getting ready to set up a new firmware update on this, this actual uh, GoPro, and I'm hoping this fixes it. However, if you see this menu right here, be sure you either set the, the time manually, which I'm going to do here in just a second, or set it with the GoPro app. But be sure you do this. If you just hit you know, record up here, it will cancel this, and it will act like it's recording, but on my cameras, it will not. So I'm going to choose set manually here. This is the GoPro Hero 8 is uh, touch, is touch, so... It is the fifth. I'm just going to leave that time for right now. So I've set the time and everything. So with the GoPro, or you can see that I have it on looping 1080p. The net, so the first number is the... So right here, you can see that I have it set up on looping. I have 1080p, which is resolution. I have 60 frames per second, five minute loops, and I have this set up on the wide aspect ratio, which we're gonna talk about in just a second. Um, first and foremost, first thing I wanna do is make sure that I have my camera up to date with the newest firmware. So let's connect this GoPro to my phone app and get it actually uh, connected. You're gonna download the GoPro app from your respective app store. So we want to connect our application to our camera. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into the settings, which is I'm going to, I'm going to pull down, and you guys really can't see it, but right here in the center, I don't know if I can get to zoom there a little bit, right in the center here, it says preferences. So I'm going to touch that, and then the top one right here is connections. So I'm going to choose that. And then the top one is wireless connections, and mine says on, but I'm gonna choose connect device. When I have that connected, I wanna choose that, it gives me two options, GoPro app or smart remote. We're gonna choose the GoPro app. So now it's uh, sitting here. So 
Now I want to go to the GoPro app, and again, if you guys are seeing this later on, it may change a little bit, but I'm going to um, choose here. I'm going to choose uh, Add Camera at the top. It's going to search. Bingo, it's found it. So we found your camera. We're going to choose Connect Camera. It says Bluetooth would like to pair. We're going to choose Pair. There we go. You get a auditory signal from the GoPro and now I have this so I'm going to change this name to something that I know what it is I I have multiple uh, Wallet for dollars my phone name so it was there I have multiple GoPros that I'm using throughout the day on my boat so I'm going to change this to um, rear cam hit done and I'm going to choose save new name give it a second here there we go. Paired up. Now, here's the deal. It says update camera. There's a lot of different ways you can update this firmware. You can actually plug it into a computer, uh, which is the preferred method. Right now, I'm going to show you guys how to do it this way, which is the easiest way. Uh, and then we're going to, um, you know, I'm going to continue on and show you the settings that I use. So I'm going to choose update camera. So it says it's going to be connecting here. It's going to connect to my camera. There we go. Update camera. And again, it's updating the firmware here. And what the firmware is, is basically the software that's on the camera that, sh that allows the, the hardware to work. Um, and GoPro and other hardware manufacturers out there will actually um, put these out fairly often. Join. Yeah, sorry about my uh, dirty pointer finger there. I've been building guitars with students at, my, at school, so I've got some paint on it today. won't come off. So anyway, searching for camera. There we go. You can see that it's, it's transferring files. So... I'm going to uh, speed this up and get started as soon as it gets done updating the firmware. So while your camera is actually updating here, there's a couple um, of notifications down here that says don't leave the app. Um, the GoPro will power on and power off a couple times when it's actually going through this process. You can see the red light blinking over here on the GoPro. That means it's, uh, it's transferring the files over there. And again, this is the less preferred method to do this. I'm going to be going back and reinstalling the firmware via a hardwired cable and I'm going to wipe this thing clean because I've had some issues with it and I'm going to test some things out to see if I can get this thing actually uh, fixed. So, uh, new update again, it's installing the update, you can see the red light, there's transmission there being happening and again this is done via Bluetooth. Um, so it's actually fairly quick for what you're, what you're getting. Uh, but as soon as this update is uh, over, I'll show you guys the settings that I use to capture my moments in the water. Alright, so it shows update complete on my camera. It's blurred out there. Sorry, you can't see it. So it actually is installing the update. Bingo. Shows all set. I'm going to choose done. Now it says my GoPro here ready is ready. So it's going to connect again. The cool thing you can do with the GoPro app is the GoPro Hero 9 has a front-facing camera. But if you use the Yolotech PowerStick 53... Um, and you're setting it up on the back of the boat or even the front of your boat, it's really tough for you to see what you're actually filming. But with the GoPro app, you can actually set it up to do a live view of that camera to see what you're capturing. It's really tough for me to show you right now. I'll show you um, in one of my videos when I'm actually uh, fishing. But if you take the camera and you point it towards around your midsection from the back when, it's, uh, when the, the Yolotech is uh, extended fully, um, it seems like it's a little low, but I'm telling you, if you point it towards like your belt, maybe like your belly button, you'll get a lot more of the action and less sky, which is pretty good. So I'm going to choose here, enable preview, and you're going to see some cameras here. I'm going to choose join. You have to join the uh, Wi-Fi that's that's created from your GoPro to actually create or to see the uh, what's happening here. Give it a second to connect. There we go. You can see. If I turn this thing around, you can see a live view of it. There I am. GoPros actually will rotate, which is really cool. So no matter how you have it, you can see that I have a live view of my uh, my camera, which is pretty cool. So you can see exactly what uh, you're filming. So that's how to get your GoPro connected to the GoPro app. Now let's look at some of the settings. You can change the settings within this as well. So if you go to settings, you can change all this stuff um, let's just look at it here. So notice here, voice control is turned on. That is a huge deal. GoPro Hero 5s and up have voice commands, and I'll show you why that's so powerful in just a second. 
Uh, shows voice control language, US, you can change that. Wake on vi voice is really cool. So if it's off and you want it to turn on, you can say GoPro, I think it's GoPro turn on and it actually would turn on, which is really cool. Um, the LEDs, I have them all on, that way I can see that it's recording. Um, quick capture is something for the GoPro app to edit, which we'll talk about in just a second. Default mode, last used video. Auto off, 15 minutes, that means the camera, if it's not recording, will turn off in 15 minutes. Um, the screen saver, which means it goes black, which is a really good deal. It saves uh, battery power, but it also cuts down on heat on your GoPro. Auto lock is off, my LCD brightness is 100%. If I turn that down, if I'm not using an external battery, it actually will save my battery power a little bit. Uh, orientation is on or all. That means when you rotate it, it will actually rotate itself. Um, GPS will show you where you've actually filmed the stuff at if you're using the GoPro app, which is really pretty cool. Um, so we're not going to get into a huge amount of this. Um, what I want to do is I'm going to show you on the camera how to, the settings that I use on a daily basis to get you started. All right, so the camera's on. And again, this is a GoPro Hero 8 black. So I'm gonna choose down here under looping. And you can see I have looping set up, I have standard activity. And again, there's a lot of different ones of these. Slow-mo. The thing that I like to do is five minute looping. So if I choose looping up here, this is something I've created. I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna edit that so you guys can see. So I'm gonna choose a little pencil over there. So right here is where I think GoPro is lacking on the GoPro Hero 8. You could do it on the GoPro Hero 6, but you can see here that my resolution, and resolution guys in a simple term is the amount of color dots that are on the screen. The more color dots you have, the better your picture is going to be, the more vivid your color is going to be, um, and 1080p, then it's going to go up to like 2.7K, and then you're going to go into 4K, and then even into 8K on some video cameras. Right now, I have mine set up at 1080p, 60 frames a second, which is a really good place to start. 1080p, 60 frames a second. If you're just now getting started and you want something that's rock solid and bulletproof, start with 1080p, 60 frames a second. Notice here that I can do 4K at 30 frames a second with the GoPro Hero 8, and I'm sure the GoPro Hero 9 will do the same thing. If you're just now getting into video editing and you want to create a really nice um, video of your, you know, of your adventures on the water and you if you don't have a really high-end computer guys you want to stay away from 4k video editing because it takes an extreme amount of overhead as far as like uh, hardware to actually make sure that this is actually going to render and stuff so my advice is to go to 1080p 60 frames a second you can even do 1080p at 120 frames a second but I'm going to tell you that if you do this, it's going to use a new codec called the HEVC codec, and don't or codec don't you know spend a whole lot of time um, thinking about that. But again, unless you have a decent computer, you're probably going to want to stick to 1080p, 60 frames a second to get started. That's 1080p resolution, 60 frames a second. So again, a video is nothing more than a bunch of different photographs played in succession in in a rapid order. So the more frames you have, for example, mine's at 60 frames per second, the more you have of that, the more uh, fluid your slow motion videos and things are going to be. And if you don't plan on doing any kind of slow motion videos, guys, I'm telling you, you want to use looping, 1080p, 60 frames a second will be rock solid and bulletproof. That's where you want to start. So when I go to looping and I choose this, again, the interval here, let's talk about looping for a second. The reason looping is so cool on a GoPro, especially for on the water adventures, is that you can go out there and when you press the uh, record button, if you have looping set on five minutes, it's like a snake or a dragon eating, eating its own tail. So if you have it on five minute loops, which it is right now, it'll record five minutes of video. And when it gets back to that start of that first, or, you know, once it records five minutes, it'll start recording over that first minute of footage. So what happens is it'll keep recording those five minutes. So when you stop the camera, either by pressing the record button on top or you do the voice command, which I'm gonna show you in just a second, it will actually save the last five minutes of time on your SD card. Why is that so cool? Because you do not have to dig through a plethora or an abundance of footage to find your fish catches. When you say, when you either press the power button here I'm sorry, the, uh, basically the shutter release button or the record button, it'll actually stop the last five minutes of your life, record it, and then everything will be fine. So really, you know, 
statistically, the, the action that's happened probably has happened in the last minute of those five minutes. So when you open up a computer and you go to this SD card that you've plugged into your computer, there'll be a bunch of files, but you can actually click through there and you'll see five video files that are one minute in length. So you can actually click through there and find the one minute that has your action on it and then put that into your, uh, your editing software to create your footage, which is a huge time saver. Uh, it goes from 5 minutes to 20 minutes to 60 minutes to 120 minutes and then it goes max. So the max means that it'll, it'll go until the SD card is filled up and then it'll record over the first one. 5 minute intervals is what you want. That is totally plenty good enough. Um, low light off, hyper smooth is high. I have that set up high. That's basically like um, that's digital uh, camera stabilization there for you. Zoom, you can zoom in. Stay away from a zoom. That is, uh, op that's digital zoom, not optical zoom. Um, we're waiting on everything here, looking at it. Um, everything, these are just shortcuts. And then I have that set up. So the cool thing about this is, so again, what you want to do, you want to use looping, that five minute intervals, 1080p, 60 frames a second, but if you look here on standard, notice now that I have the option to do a few other things. Um, if you look down here and you see all this, if you go into a Pro Tune, which is basically a manual setting or a manual mode within GoPro, you can see here where it says ISO Max. If you go into the manual settings and you want to set your ISO, make sure you set it to 1600. Don't worry about what ISO means. It's basically how sensitive your camera sensor is to light. The higher you press that up, um, it'll allow more light in. It'll actually be more sensitive to light, but the higher you go up with that, it's going to make your film more grainy. So make sure you have that max. If you, if you have that on your option, uh, set that to 1600 max. That way it doesn't go higher than that. That way your, your footage is always going to be nice and crisp and clean. So I'm going to go, I don't want to reset that. So I want to go back. But if I go in here and I edit this again, you can see that there are a lot of different. So 2.7K, I can do 120 frames a second. Notice it says, uh, if I can get it to focus here, that says HEVC warning, basically saying that if you don't have um, your uh, computer that will support the HEVC codec, then you're not going to be able to edit that footage. So I'm going to you know, leave that alone, 2.7K, 60 frames a second. Go back. I'm just showing that. That is why I think GoPro is lacking on the looping feature. That should be allowed. 2.7K, 60 frames a second. That is the ultimate for me. That's what I would love to be able to use. So now I have my camera set up with looping. I have everything ready to go. Again, I have my camera pointer to whatever. The greatest thing about the new GoPros from the 5 Up is that I can actually use voice commands on these cameras from the front of my boat. If I have one on the bow and one on the, uh, the transom, the one on the bow is really easy to hit that power button to stop the footage. However, let's just say that I go back and I press this button here. Notice that it's recording there. It has a red light up here. It shows me how much I've got. On the left-hand side, it shows me how much time I have left on the SD card. I don't know if you can pick that out, but it says 28 minutes and 4 seconds, and it's counting down. And it shows how long I've been recording right here at 16 frames or 16 seconds. And then over here, it shows my battery life. So if I catch a fish, this thing's going, let's just say that it goes for two hours and I don't catch a fish. Well, what it's doing, it's sitting there creating this five minute loop. So now what I say, if I'm in the back front of the boat, I could say, GoPro, stop recording. Notice that the GoPro has stopped recording. So from the front of the boat now, once you have it stopped, it saved the last five minutes of time to your SD card. So now I can restart it. GoPro, start recording. And you'll notice that it's continuing to continue to make this new clip for me, which is amazing. So if I go through and, you know, 15 minutes later, I catch a fish and I want to save the last five minutes. GoPro, stop recording. So I had a comment about asking me how to take a photo with this. And I would recommend going through your GoPro's user, ma user manual and seeing all of the actual... Uh, commands that are programmed into the firmware, but one of them is GoPro take photo Notice that it takes a photograph there for me and saves it to my SD card Say GoPro take photo. It'll take a photo bingo there it went again And then now one thing I want to show you here though is I want you to see how 
just how wide of an angle that this camera has. So I'm literally about an inch away from my camera lens right there and you can't see, and you could see way more of my fingers than you think you should be able to. If you're taking a photo of a fish, you want this thing to be like, you know, a couple feet at the max away from your camera and it will look like an absolute swamp donkey. You get a lot more uh, stuff on there, you get a lot better pictures that way. So, GoPro, start recording. Notice it was on photo mode. Now it's went back to the looping mode and it's recording video. GoPro, take photo. GoPro, take photo. You'll notice that no matter how many times I say that, if the camera is recording a video, it will not let me choose uh, to take a photo. You have to say, GoPro, stop recording. And then, GoPro, take photo. One thing that I'd recommend though, just a quick note before I uh, hop off here, is that if you are saying that and holding your fish to take that, there's no interval there, which means it takes it immediately. Um, I think you could probably um, set a timer. Let's just see if I, if I set a timer for three seconds. GoPro, take photo. Perfect. That's what we need to do. We need to set the timer there for three seconds. That will give you time to pose the fish. You'll hear it beep and then it'll take a photo. Let's see if it saves that. GoPro, start recording. So now it goes back into video mode. It's recording, recording my video. Again, still in looping mode. It'll loop for five minutes and then it will, uh, when I say stop, it'll actually will stop the last five minutes and save those. And it doesn't have to be five minutes. Notice that this is 12 seconds. If I tell it to stop, it's going to save that clip for five or for 16 seconds or whatever. GoPro, stop recording. GoPro, stop recording. So now I have the camera stop. Let's see if the timer changed. I've never tried to do this. It's something new. Let's see if it stays on three seconds. If it does, that would be super cool. GoPro, take photo. Bingo. Sweet. Go into photo mode. Change your timer to three seconds. When you say GoPro, take photo, it will have the three seconds there, let you pose the fish, and then it will take a photo of your catch. All right, guys, so that's a video showing you guys how to set this up. You want to set it up at 1080p, 60 frames a second if you're just now getting started. Um, you want to make sure that you're using the silicone putty, the rainproof putty on your Yolo Tech uh, PowerStick 53 inch. You notice that in the very first video, I told you to take the battery out. I was talking to Christian Corley from Yolo Tech actually today. Uh, and he says the GoPro has fixed that uh, ability to um, keep the battery in there. However, I take the battery out. It doesn't really matter if you have a battery in there or not, if you're powering it ex externally. One thing that I think it does is it gives you this um, void of space that allows uh, a little bit of air exchange in there. That way um, the GoPro doesn't overheat. Um, and that was a major issue with GoPros back in the day. We learned something together also on this video is that make sure you go in and set the three second timer on your photo mode. That way you have time to pose your fish or whatever you're wanting to have a photo taken of, whether that be your family or whatever. Um, that way you get a chance to, to pose with it and you get a really nice photograph. Again, we're learning as we go. Um, so make sure you set it up. Looping, 1080p, 60 frames a second is a great place to start. Um, go in, turn it on five minute looping. Use your voice commands, GoPro start recording, GoPro stop recording, GoPro take photo. And then um, in the next video, the last video of the series, I'm gonna show you guys how to take the clips that are created from this and using a free software, create a very basic edit and export it or render it out into an MP4 video that you can share on Facebook, you can put on YouTube, you can do whatever. So guys, if this video has helped you out or this series is, is teaching you guys how to use your cameras better along with the PowerStick 53 inch, consider subscribing to my channel if you like fishing content. Definitely share it with your buddies so that way we can all get on the same page of how to capture every moment on the water. If you guys can, get out there and lean on them. We'll see you next time on another line.